Hello, it's me, Rachel. <laughs> um, so I've been wanting to do uh, this tag for quite some time. Um, it's a VR2K at a Miss the Gray. Her tag, Coffee House Ducks. Um, so I'm going to try and hop right in. So the first prompt is the espresso shot. A deck that's strong, punchy, and gets straight to the point. So I'm going with Patrick Valenza's uh, Secret Pocket Oracle, Mildred Payne's Secret Pocket Oracle. So first off, doesn't it remind you of like a little espresso shot? Like it's so tiny. And the colors sort of remind me of like coffee colors. Anyway. Yeah, for me, this is um, quite unique in, in my collection in the way that I'm able to read it. Um, I think it's the only deck that I have that I'm able to read it um, on a purely intuitive level. Um, I feel in that sense it's very, like, uh, you know, psychological. What I usually do is I'll just shuffle and draw three cards. And then just read them, like I said, on a very intuitive level. And what happens is that if I do decide after doing so to um, revert to the guidebook, more often than not, um, Patrick Valenza's interpretations uh, have nothing to do with how I interpreted the cards. Um, which is not normally how I read. So I don't know, it just, right off the bat, like whenever I draw images from this card, I just immediately, I, I'm able to um, draw something from something that's going on in, in my uh, subconscious. Because I don't usually have a question, it's just like, in general, like, uh, what's going on with me, or what do I need to pay attention to, or what am I ignoring, you know? Um, so yeah, this is so itty bitty and, and cute. And it's it's strong and, and punchy. Like, I mean, it is a, the deck does have like a dark theme. I have these all upside down. Um, <laughs> it does have a dark theme, but for me, um, all of Patrick Valenza's deck, ha decks have this whimsical quality to them. But nonetheless, it's, you know, it's strong and punchy, in my opinion. Yeah. Like, yeah, this was um, my reading from yesterday these three cards. Oh wait, you can't see them. <laughs> and um, I got a really powerful reading from that. Like these three cards, Sage, Bell, and Octopus. All right, so there's that one. And I just wanted to mention one other deck that I feel fits the espresso shot. And that is the Game of Thrones tarot. <laughs> now this is actually a deck that um, I haven't used in a little while. And I've wanted to, but my reason for not using it is because, uh, I don't know, um, I was afraid that it would make me want to um, pick up the books to read again or to get back into watching the series, which I actually had not finished watching the HBO series. Like I was watching it 
oh god I don't know I got through the, the first three seasons I think I was in season four and then my life blew up <laughs> and you know like when you're that invested in Game of Thrones that you know your life has really uh fallen apart if you've missed like 10 episodes of Game of Thrones in a row <laughs> when you were watching it like you know religiously anyway um, I'm being way too long-winded. So this is, uh, I feel, also fits the espresso shot category because um, it's, again, it's like the uh, the, the uh, Mildred Payne Secret Pocket Oracle where I just feel it's strong and punchy. It gets straight to the point. I'm able to, bam, just like get the interpretation or get something from it. And I think that's because... I'm so familiar with these characters. I read the books um, twice. So it's like, you know, King of Coins, like this guy. It's like, I know, I know this person. Do you know what I mean? So I'm able to get a lot out of it. It's really a good deck. Um... Yeah, right? Like, we could just go on and on about Game of Thrones. <laughs> um, yeah, so I know um, some people had a little bit of a beef about it because um, it was mentioned that some of the characters in here um, were used repeatedly. Like, there's Ned. Like, we just saw him, right? But I, I don't mind that. Because um, you go on a journey throughout the, the series with all of these characters and throughout the challenges that uh, they're met with, like, they change. Like, we do change. Um, we are shaped by our, by, our, uh, by our environment and trauma or, you know, we grow um, or we're corrupted. So... Um, I can totally see how, you know, like Daenerys is depicted as the Empress, but also the Queen of Wands in, in a, you know, different, um, one of the other cards. Anyhow. So, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I love this deck. Anyway, moving on. <clears throat> so now we have the Drip, a deck that's simple, accessible, and gets the job done. So I'm choosing my Albano, my Albano weight. And this, this little guy here I crocheted a few years ago. And I love it because it just, to me, it just um, fits so well with the colors of the Albano. Yeah, uh, this is just a, a very, very clear, accurate reader for me. It, uh, I've, I've never had any trouble um, in interpreting it. And it's simple. I don't know. It's just I, I love the Albano. I have a few other, you know, uh, Rider Waite Smith, uh, Pamela Coleman Smith uh, decks, but this one, this is my, my tried and true. And I won't go on much about this because I know I've talked about it, I think, in, I don't know, my only 10 decks video or something. All right. Now we have the pour over, a deck that you need to take your time with, but totally worth the effort. So, one minute. So I could, of course, I could go on about the Thoth. Or Thoth. Um, this is my 1986 uh, AGM with um, the uh, keywords in Italian. Um, I'm not going to, this isn't the deck that I want to talk about just because I think most of you are so aware of it. Um, this is definitely a labor of love. Um, if you're going to work with it or study it or really seek to understand it, 
it's a lifetime study and the book the Aleister Crowley is beautiful like it is pure poetry and this is a a vintage copy that I was very very lucky to get my hands on um anyway the one that I wanted to talk about is the tarot of the holy light so this is a study deck um this is known as a continental tarot um and I was I was studying this for a time like a few years ago when I got this I think I got this ugh, I don't know, back in like 2017, 2018. And I was so stoked about it. And I was so intrigued. Um, and I was learning about the continental system. And, but I had so much going on. Like I was going through divorce. I had to go to court a few times. It was a mess. Um, and I haven't abandoned it. But, um, I didn't get around to studying the two books that I had bought that summer, which is uh, this guy here. And then there's this volume two. There's <laughs> quite a bit of material here. Like, wow. Um, I can't even really uh, break it down for you because it's been um, such a long time since I was uh, researching this. I haven't read either. I have read some of this in relation to some of the cards I was drawing. And I know I've talked about this deck before. I forget in which video. But this is one of the best tarot guidebooks that I've ever come across. It's amazing. Um, so, it's, yeah, it's a very, very, very esoteric deck. Um, the It uses a different astrological system. So... Uh, that's a bit different. Um, and it, it's beautiful though. I mean, I, I do, um, you can, you can read with it without fully understanding the system, but I think it's so worth studying. Um, yeah, I forget. There was something else I wanted to say about this deck. So, oh yeah, um, I think this was out of print for a time. I think it's it's back in print. It's a self-published deck, but it's not a horribly expensive one. However, if you're going to buy the two guidebooks, then it's an investment because I think each book is about 25 bucks, give or take. However, it is possible to buy the deck and then you download the app. You can download the digital version of the cards through, I think it's called Fool's Dog. It's an app. And um, the guidebook, most of it is accessible through your phone. So if you choose to do so, you could buy the deck, like I said, and, and have like the digital book for $4. So that's an option. Okay, anyway, uh, what is next? Um, the Cafe Latte, a deck that's well-received and highly palatable. Um, this took me some time to decide which deck, and I think I'm going to go with the Fountain Tarot. I'm pretty sure most people like this deck. Yeah, it is just beautiful. Love the backs, silver gilding. Okay, I don't know. Why does this keep happening to me? <laughs> All right. This was the first deck, I think, I think that I bought that was um, what I would consider like, uh, uh, like it's set in like contemporary times, like in the now, it's a contemporary sort of like modern deck because my aesthetic is old <laughs> for lack of a better word I'm just I feel like I just connect to the past or things that are just timeless 
Um, but this was the first one that uh, spoke to me. Um, I don't know. I think like a lot of decks that, um, which are very well received, popular, that are set like in our times, they just don't speak to me. Um, I feel like I'm looking at Instagram or something or, or ads. That's just me. Um, but the, this deck has, um, while, while the people in here are ob obviously from our time, it has a, an ethereal quality to it. Yeah. It's very uh, emotional. just beautiful okay next we have where are we the cappuccino a deck that's classic sophisticated and a bit fussy i had trouble with this one too <laughs> i kept putting um decks on the list and then taking them off and then i told myself stop overthinking it this is just supposed to be for fun but for some reason these prompts i just had a difficult time with so I, I had a really hard time with this one in particular. I think because it's supposed to be a deck that's classic, sophisticated, and maybe a bit fussy, the cappuccino. And I don't know, I think I had trouble with the fussy bit. <laughs> but anyway, I went with the Vachetta, um, or Vachetta. Um, this is an Il Matagello. This is a, like a semi-vintage version of the deck. This was um, a deck that was on my list for quite a while before I was able to get it. I've owned it for a few years now. Um, but yeah, <laughs> to me, this is one of the most beautiful decks ever. And it's, I don't know, I think it's classic, sophisticated. I don't know if it's fussy. That's the thing. But I went with this one. It's so beautiful. I also have the um, the low Scarabeo version of this, which is known as the Tarot of the Master, and it's a very nice deck. I bought it so that um, I could use that, like if I felt like I wanted to use this deck um, on a regular basis, then I could I could use that one intermittently so that I don't have to like wear this one out. Yeah, I love this deck because it's sort of like a, a Marseille, but it's different. It's like more, uh, I don't know if you'd call it illustrated, but you know what I mean. The coloring in this deck is just gorgeous. Oh, like this is one of my favorite 10 of wands. Look at the little snails. Oh my god. I love it. Yeah. All right. Now what do we have? What did I do with the box? Oh well. Okay. Next, we have the Mocha. A deck that's rich, indulgent, and a bit extra. So for this one, I went with the Tabula Mundi. Um, this is the Silver Foil Edition. <laughs> so I have... Yeah, I have the, I have another version. This one is not the silver foil, so this is why this is um, a bit extra. So it's in this beautiful box, just gorgeous. Um, is this upside down? Yeah, 
And look at this little book. Oh my gosh. This ribbon. Everything about it is just like luxury, but it's a very deep esoteric deck. I mean, look at the backs and you have like this like holographic thing going on. And this ribbon that you use to slide the cards out. Oh my God, it's not working for some reason. <laughs> okay. You have the tree of life. I love this deck. And it includes an extra strength card. So I love the strength card because it's my, you know, my zodiacal birth card. Um, yeah. So the other interesting thing about this deck is um, it's an expansion pack. But if you choose to do so, which I did, you get these decan cards, which I just love. Like, see, these are decans of Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, Libra, Aquarius, Gemini, Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo. So yeah, on each card you have this silver foil border and the text is all in silver. Ace of Wands, Root of the Powers of Fire. So yeah, this deck is in order because I just got this. Um, <laughs> I had this deck and I've been using it for years, but um, Emma Maline was, she was running a sale and I had to. I mean, I didn't have to, but I did. I was like, okay, this is my chance to get the silver foil edition. And while she's still, it's still in print. Um, so I think everything was like, oh, I don't know, like 30% off or something, which it's not a cheap deck. So I went for it. Oh my God. So I don't have to tell you this is, this is a Thoth deck. And this, um, her decks are actually what got me into Thoth um, a few years ago. I, I love her colors. Like she um, knows all about the Golden Dawn color scale. Takes it very seriously and has a lot of fun with it. And I love the uh, the podcast. I'm an avid listener to the podcast that she co-hosts with um, T. Susan Chang. And I love Susan uh, T. Susan Chang's books, by the way. I read her tarot correspondences, and um, I have her 36 Secrets to Read as well. So I'm sure I will talk about this deck again in the future. Um, yeah. Sorry, hang on a second. I want to be very careful with it. Okay. So that was the Mocha. Now we have um, the Cortado, a deck that's balanced and objective. I went with the Illuminated Earth Oracle. Um, this is, oh my God, a beautiful deck. I know I've talked about this a couple of times. Um, yeah, I went with this because I, th I just think it's very very balanced and objective because to me I think it's extremely unbiased um and as I've said before to me like if if Bjork were a deck this would be it <laughs> so that's funny I guess thinking um of someone like Bjork as uh I don't know balanced only because I mean I love her she's a triple Scorpio which is so cool but you know so intense right so intense explosive with emotions but yet no I find her just so truthful and um genuine and just so how can the truth be I don't know unbalanced I just yeah 
Um, I don't know how to <laughs> articulate what I'm saying, but you know, this deck is amazing. I'm just in awe of um, the, the creator's vision and talent. And so, yeah, being un unbiased is, of course, going to be uh, going to bring very objective results and interpretations. And, and that's what I that's what I get from this. So through balance and objectivity, you get peace. Oh, my God, do I love this deck. It's amazing. So illuminated earth. Oracle. Hang on a second. All right. Next, we have the Conpenna, a deck that puts you in your place, but with a hint of sweetness. So I decided to go again with another M.M. Maline deck who did the Tabula Mundi that I just showed you. So this is a, the, the Rosetta is a Thoth clone. And so I don't tend to consider, um, the Thoth decks sweet. <laughs> and this is a clone, but I mentioned it before. There's something about this um, that it just, uh, it brings like a warmness, a softness, I guess, to the Thoth. So, you know, it puts me in my place, but I don't know, with this little hint of, you know, gentleness. So this is the uh, Papyrus edition. She just came out with another one. I forget what she calls it, but the borders are, it's like this goldenrod color or something. I'm not sure because I haven't seen it in person. I want to get it. It looks beautiful, but I'm going to wait. <clears throat> I decided not to buy it. When everything was on sale, I went with the Tabula Mundi silver foil. love this deck and it and the book is um the book is great did i bring it over here hmm i don't see it All right, so that is the rosetta by mm Maline. oh yeah yeah this is the this is the book for the tabula mundi so I don't have the, the the Rosetta book over here, but it's kind of like the same idea. Um, these decks are great if you want to learn more about Thoth or get into it. It really breaks down um, the astrological uh, so associations and um, and the, the Kabbalah and everything. It's great. Sorry, my throat is drying up. All right. So next we have the Chai Latte, a deck that's warm, cozy, and nurturing. So for me, I went with the Daydreaming in C2. For me, it just fits that criteria. Um, so I think I've mentioned this before. I love this little, um, these little card, these little title cards here, and I keep them in here because I think they're so cute. I don't know why, like this How to Read Tarot. But something about it just makes me think of like, I don't know, when you put like a um, a VHS in the VCR, <laughs> I don't know, and like something comes up on the screen. I don't know. It's so cute. Um, I love these backs. So yeah, this is a wonderful collage deck. Um, it just, uh, yeah, it just fits that warm, cozy, nurturing feeling for me. It just, it really does. I don't know what, what it is. Um, I love the, I love the design of the deck. Like I, I love the art anyway, but I think if were it not for the borders, I might not have noticed this deck. It just like makes it all cohesive or something. And I think the other reason that, um, coziness comes to mind is it, um, brings to mind, um, <coughs> sorry, looking through old magazines that my mom and my grandmother had growing up. So 
sorry, my throat was drying up. Um, as I mentioned, I've been, uh, I keep getting sick and I keep losing my voice. And although I'm better, I don't know. So I probably have to go through the rest of this without talking as much. <laughs> but yeah, I did, um, I did talk about this deck in my only 10 decks. So if you'd like to hear more, uh, you know where to find it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I love that page. And that two of wands. Okay. That's so annoying. It's just been like the worst winter for me in that regard. Okay. So next we have the matcha latte, a deck that's an acquired taste or a bit unconventional. Trophy della Luna by Patrick Valenza. So this is the blue mutation. Beautiful Marseille. With these quirky, like, deviant moon characters for the majors and the courts. <coughs> Sorry. So yeah, I mean, it's an acquired taste. It's unconventional. But I love its old world charm nonetheless. Sorry. Love that knight. Love the high priestess. This is one of my favorite, favorite decks. And then there's these um, little oracle cards. I just love them. I love this. Look at this. <laughs> it's so cute. And then the beast pack, which I love the beast pack. This is so much fun. They're like, you know, archetypes or something. <laughs> oh, I love it. Like, I think my daughter said, uh, let's see, that that's her. The Hot Chocolate, a deck that speaks to a younger version of yourself. So, sorry about that. I went with the Tarot Mucha. Because um, this was a deck that um, I had no intention of buying. Because I just, I it was pretty, but I didn't think that it was something that I needed. I was only, for a time, going after decks that I thought would... Um, help me further develop my understanding of tarot or my trajectory um looking at tarot history and i don't know this is just a rider weight clone but then <coughs> the images got stuck in my head somehow and i i just felt like i had to buy it and it's another one of those decks that i don't know why i have no idea why it is just extremely extremely accurate it's uncanny how every time i've used this it's exactly like, it mirrors exactly what's going on in my head. 
And the reason that uh, it speaks to a younger version of myself is because if I had picked tarot up um, when I was a teen or young adult, this would have been my deck. I love Alphonse Mucha and all that. I love the little box it comes into. I haven't used this in a while. Just because I have, you know, too many decks. Low Scarabeo. It is lovely. Like I love I love this um Wheel of Fortune. It's beautiful. Yeah. All right. Now, just a couple more. So, the Italian Soda, a deck that's fun, low key, and not overly serious. I went with the Mermaid Tarot by Dame Darcy. <laughs> So everyone knows the Mermaid Tarot, I believe. And yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Like, I don't think I even need to explain, right? <laughs> yeah, I talked about, I think I went through this whole deck in my Good Mood Decks tag. And I was laughing at myself because I was talking about how I love three-cornered hats. <laughs> They just get me every time. I don't know. I'm such a dork. I remember my mom, um, she was visiting me um, quite a few years ago. And we were, um, she came to visit and we were walking around Boston. And uh, this guy walked by and he was dressed <coughs> like this, like an 18th century garb. He obviously worked at, you know... I don't know, some reenactment place. There's all sorts of that history on Boston. And my mom caught me like, I don't know, checking him out or something. <laughs> and she went, Rachel. And I'm like, what? I like that sort of thing. And she started laughing and she's like, I know you do. <laughs> How am I talking about three cornered hats right now? Okay, enough. <laughs> enough. Okay. I'm so sorry about <coughs> my my throat. Oh my god. We have just one more. The herbal tea. A deck that takes things down a notch or helps you unwind. I'm going with the elemental power. I was using this every night, <coughs> sorry, I think like last year, um, I needed some healing. We went through like this, uh, this sort of like family crisis thing and it was, um, I needed some healing and I was doing some, I don't know, some meditations with this where I was, I was, um, I don't know. I was actually, I was using this for like spells, I guess, just to, you know, manifest, um, courage. And this just, ugh, I really connected with this. I mean, there aren't any people in it or anything. beautiful but yeah definitely takes things down a notch I don't know this is what came to mind for this prompt
beautiful. Put that. Like, I've worked with this, this card a lot. And this, oh, love that. Love this. It's beautiful, yeah. Oh. Love this magician. Yeah, I worked with this card a lot, too. So, yeah, sorry. Um, <clears throat> I would have said more about it, but <laughs> I can't talk. So, anyway, thank you for bearing with me, and uh, I hope you enjoyed that. All right, take care.